Ave Maria. Welcome back to No Apologies. Today we're going to begin our actual ascent up the sixth step. So if you recall, our sixth step's goal was to show that the one church established by Jesus Christ is the Roman Catholic Church. So we've seen that Jesus founded a church, and we can reason that Jesus, being all-wise, in establishing a church, it would be unreasonable to think that he would establish a church and require all men to be a part of this church without having marked it unmistakably for man to be able to recognize that church down throughout the ages. So a mark is a certain indication or a sign of something. It points to something, it indicates something. So in looking for Jesus' church, we're going to go and examine and see if there are any certain clear marks or signs which Jesus established his church with. So then we then take those marks and we hold them up to all the churches that we can find within Christianity. And whichever church has all those marks uh, intact within their church today, then that is the church which Jesus established. And we find, on, upon, uh, in looking, we find four of these marks. The church which Jesus established was one, was holy, it was universal, and it was apostolic. We're going to deal with each of these in turn today, beginning with oneness. Though we've listened before to our Lord's address to His Father in the Gospel of John just before His Passion, when He expresses His desire that all who would believe in Him through His Apostle's name would be one. Now this oneness or this unity can be applied to three areas, to doctrine, to worship, and to authority. So reason tells us that the true church of Jesus Christ must be free from self-contradiction as concerning doctrine and worship. Christ only taught one faith. So wherever I find the recognized members of a specific church, I should find the exact same doctrine and the exact same worship. So although there may be certain members who are ignorant or who are misinformed or who even are in bad faith, I should be able to find a source, an authoritative source, from which I can see exactly what this church professes and believes. And if, at that source, I find any self-contradiction or any multiplicity, well then I know that I haven't found the true church, because if I find any differences within doctrine, then I've not found just one religion, I've found many religions. But Jesus taught just one religion. So oneness in doctrine. And the same then is true concerning worship. Wherever I find the members of a specific church, I should find the same essential worship. So Jesus revealed to us how we are to approach the Father, and He revealed how the Father wishes to sanctify us. So although I can expect certain variations in ceremonies or in language according to times and to places, I should never expect to find a different essential worship. So that the Church of Jesus has to be one in authority, we say that Jesus intended His Church to be, re to be united under one and the same authority, and this is clear from our past, past vlogs, seeing that our Lord established a church on the apostles, they were to teach and to govern, and that he showed a certain primacy of place to St. Peter and set him up as the chief, the visible head of his church. So then certainly, if I find a church that has no universal head or no structured hierarchy, then I can conclude that I haven't found the church of Jesus Christ. Now, there are Christian groups which can claim one or two of these points, the Catholic Church is able to have a claim on all three. So Greek Orthodox might be able to claim a oneness in worship, but they can't claim a oneness in authority or government, pointing to various patriarchs as their heads. Our Jehovah's Witnesses, on the other hand, could claim oneness in authority, because they all look to their governing body as their head. But they certainly can't claim oneness in doctrine, because as if upon examination you find endless self-contradiction and backpedaling put forth by this governing body. Protestantism fails in all three areas. They have no universal or visible head. They are not one in doctrine, for they claim the right for each individual to interpret sacred scripture according to their private judgment. And they are not one in worship on account of that private judgment. For we find then that one sect promotes this number of sacraments, while another promotes this number of sacraments. But the Catholic Church can claim oneness in all three areas. We are one in doctrine, 
Catholics the world over profess the exact same thing. We are one in worship, but we all partake of the same seven sacraments, the central of which includes the one sacrifice of the body and blood of Jesus Christ in the Mass, which is celebrated on our altars in all the churches throughout the entire world. And we can claim one in authority, but we all recognize one chief shepherd, one visible head, which is the Bishop of Rome, the Pope. So the Catholic Church can truly profess oneness in regards to this first mark of the Church of Jesus Christ. Thanks for joining me here on No Apologies. Ave Maria.